In this episode, we will have our big Duna lander that we have sent a while ago, piloted by Kiltless Kerman, arrive at Duna, perform the docking or actually rendezvous with the big orbital science station, as well as docking and finally transferring some crew and cargo before our big day, the landing, the first manned landing on Duna, our first Kerbal landing on Duna, that is. So, let's get right into this episode. We have over here our Duna Big Lander, piloted by Kiltless Kerman, who is the rebel without a kilt, and he is one of my long-standing patrons. By the way, thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, those guys that are providing support. It is because of you that I can continue to make this awesome content and enjoy playing KSP with you guys. So thank you very much for your support. You guys are awesome. Anyway, uh, we are approaching Duna, and as you can tell, we are uh, on final approach. The Duna rendezvous should be happening in roughly 25 days, but we can actually make another maneuver, which will be in two days, which will be correcting our arrival. So we do want to bring down the periapsis significantly, uh, right now because all of the maneuvers later on will be much more expensive however this one is actually quite cheap so I, I think overall it's gonna take roughly 10 to 20 30 meters per second and we have a budget of 3300 so that's more enough however you have to keep in mind that we will need to be performing a deceleration and landing on the Duna how as well as the you know power descent landing and then ascent and coming back because i fully intend to bring back the science from duna and we will be doing some deployment of you know the breaking ground experiments which i have lovingly taken with me yes however that's not going to be done by quiltless himself the crew that has that will be performing these tasks has already arrived at Duna in the previous episode. Guys, if you have missed it, it's a good one. It's a place where we were doing a huge orbital station arriving at Duna, which will be performing a lot of science experiments and whatnot, including like the big orbital lab and all that kind of jazz. Right. So, 11.5 meters per second, that we're going to be happening in 23 seconds. I have severely gimped the throttle on the on on this uh, rocket nozzle because, I mean, seriously, 11 meters per second, that's literally nothing. It, it The engine wouldn't even make a puff out of it. So, yeah. Very careful burning, just to make sure that we correct our Duna periapsis. Down to around, I don't know, 100-ish kilometer. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see, where do we lie? I mean, we might do some f more final corrections when we enter the Duna Sphere of Influence. So let's just accelerate to it. That's gonna be happening in roughly now a couple of hours. Kerbal Alarm Clock, thank you very much for having it. I mean, I do like the Kerbal Alarm Clock better than the stock one. Do you guys? I don't know, let me know in the comments below. Anyway. Right, now we have our periapsis here, and we are finally in the Duna's sphere of influence of now. Yes. Right. So right now we're going to do another maneuver that will be bringing our periapsis down from the 500 to roughly 100, and I want it to be aligned with Ike, because our orbital station is aligned at Ike. It's not that we're going to go on Ike, but we are going to go... Actually... Hmm... Maybe. Now, Ike has a low gravity. So if in theory I could come to the station, refuel, land on the Ike on the engine bell, in theory, I could be returning back, maybe, to do now performing a rendezvous, refilling my engines, and then coming back to do like hmm okay now that is something that I didn't consider but maybe just maybe that could be a uh, doable because then we would be able to, to get the surface information and data from both Ike and Duna ha huh. yeah well what do you know what can you do I'm clearly talking in <laughs> post-production however yeah what we're gonna do now first, we're gonna dock with the Dunam station. 
I think that's the most important because this one has enough juice to basically go anywhere in the system assuming that we refill it so then it would have like metric crap ton of fuel and uh, the Duna station which arrived here also has that fuel for refueling and whatnot so why not use it I don't know I'm just thinking out loud anyway the insertion burn is gonna be taking some 440 ish meters per second to ensure that we can properly dock with the station and come to uh, some sort of a transfer orbit until we manage to secure a nice rendezvous all right and uh, yeah, now let's enjoy our arrival. We have scheduled everything and let's just see how beautiful Duna looks when we arrive there. And you might be wondering, but Grumforx, this is a big lander. It's like a thing. It's a two man capsule, right? Why are you taking only Quiltless? Because the scientist is already at the space station. Yes. And I think the scientists will, for the most part, be smoking Kerman, which is uh, like smoking Warthog, one of, another one of my uh, long-standing patrons. So he will be joining Kiltless on their epic voyage to Duna surface, and maybe back. Who knows? Right, okay, so a uh, burn will be in three minutes and it should last for a total of 12 seconds. Just making sure that we are nicely aligned. There we go. Our burn is 454 meters per second. Should be in one and a half minute. Making sure that we are well aligned. Kiltless, are you ready? Yeah, no, he's happy. Oh, look at that gorgeous view. <gasps> wow. Oh my god, that's just amazing. I cries above Duna. Beautiful. Okay, 30 seconds to the burn. Now we're gonna be preparing and getting ready. I mean, the goal is to, you know, drop down our epopsis. I wish I could really queue these. I don't know why I couldn't. I mean, you could have the flight computer execute the burns while I'm capturing gorgeous visuals, but apparently it's only doable if you're using remote again, which I am. But Kiltus has the manual control because he is the pilot de jour, so yeah. Alright, Kiltus. Okay, you done? Okay, good. Now, after taking a couple of more epic screenshots for the episode, we're gonna go and we have plenty of life support. I'm just checking, I don't want any of my Kerbals dying of hunger. I mean, it's not a good PR, you know, for the company. So, yeah, Duna Big Science Station, and as you can tell, well, we are actually beautifully aligned. Ascending node is 0 0.3, which is <laughs> simply amazing. I'm just gonna go do minor tweaks and corrections, 0 0.2, yeah, oh, zero, minus 0 0.8, yeah, okay. And now let us make sure that we align, yeah, the rival, look at this. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Intercept 2.9 kilometers. Of course, we're going to make the best of it after we do it. But the burn is in 12 seconds, so make sure. Oh, and it's a tiny burn, so I have to be really, really, really careful on the gas scale of things. There we go, 0 0.4. I think that's good enough. So rather than doing anything else, I think I'm going to go and perform, make sure that this rendezvous happens in the best possible way. Yeah, right. Okie doke. Now what I'm going to do is, this, this is close enough, and I'm going to say, okay, warp to here-ish. Around the periapsis I think would be nice, so yeah, warp here. Do a nice flyby around Duna, and uh, yes, see? There you go, and when you come in close, we're going to be performing the rendezvous. Yeah, blah, 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 actually meant that there is some science to be gathered. However, I cannot bother with it. I'm too busy making sure that I plan my rendezvous correctly. Right, so I have switched to the target velocity, which is 242 meters per second. We seem to be aligned because the yellow marker is on top of the purple marker on the nav ball. This is always an easy way for me to go gauge the rendezvous. And also the retrograde markers are for the most part aligned. I'm gonna burn a little bit here to make sure that they're fully aligned, which means we will end up in the same spot in space. And that should be happening soon, in two minutes, 20 seconds. And um, note one thing, I'm trying not to decelerate too much too early. Uh, why? 
if I do that, I would get a nice, smoother, simpler encounter. However, if I do it too quickly, that encounter is going to happen on the dark side of Duna, well, whether as I want it to happen here, where we have nice, you know, lighting, illumination, everything we need to for a proper docking. Say what, Kiltas? Uh huh. Okay. You know? Camera crews are watching you? Okay, yeah, yeah you, I know you gotta be piloting, buddy. Don't worry about it. We are approaching the target at 163 meters per second, which is like huge, huge velocity. But as we come closer, we're gonna be dropping it down pretty substantially. Don't you worry. We're gonna do a ho hopefully a so nice soft docking at, you know, 0 0.1 meters per second. However, when it comes to approach, yeah, we want to approach it rather harshly, so, yeah. We are already on the sunny side of Duna, and if we, go t if we push it too far, we're gonna go on the sunset side, yeah. Mm, we don't have much time to do the docking, so, yeah, that's something that we need to consider clearly. Right, so, one minute to rendezvous. We are going quite quickly, and I am dropping a little bit velocity, but not too much. All right, just to make sure we are five kilometers out. Four, three, four, nine, four, six, etc. Guiltless, just make sure that, oh, now I realize pressing F4 actually hides the markers. Okay, let me just quickly take out the docking maneuver planner. And let me see, by the way, guys, I actually am doing this second time because first time when I did, I tried to rendezvous and I got a Kraken attack because I left the SAS on. And I mean, if you'll be interested to see that blooper episode, uh, way of just, I could actually post it as a short later on. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested to see it. Um, okay, so we are 1000 meters and we are approaching the station quickly at 47 meters per second. Yeah, this is scary guys, actually. All right, let's reduce the velocity by a little bit. All right, ah, it's a huge station, I can tell you that much. So the idea would be to dock on the docking port and just, you know, using the frontal shield. There we go, enable, we're gonna control from here. And right now, oh, we cannot aim to that. This is a beautiful sight. Really, maybe this should be the the thumbnail for the episode, hmm, just might. All right, so actually I'm gonna use this docking port set as a target and the sharp-eyed among you might actually see one potential issue, which might manifest itself later. I'm gonna give you time to write it in the comments if you have spotted it. However, okay, let's do and perform the docking. I'm gonna remove the solar panels because I really don't want those to be impacting anything else. Okay, we've got the <coughs> going towards the docking port. And as always, I really love this uh, Clampotron docking port. Uh, at least this is Navy Fish alignment indicator. It's a wonderful mod. I love playing with it. I mean, I can perform dockings without it, but with it, it's just infinitely more fun. In theory, you could be lo looking at the nav ball if you want to make sure that those purple and the yellow marker are perfectly aligned. Because if they are aligned, you're going to end up at the same point in space. You're going to collide, essentially. That's what it means with your target. So, however, with this guy, I actually having the whisker down, which means my controls are okay, and the green and uh, green and uh, I'm trying to get the yellow pip to be on the same side of the coordinate system as the green ones. Because that means that we are in going into the direction to intercept it. Where the green lines are in the center, that means that we have to burn only straightly forward and we will be ending up directly at our target destination. The orange pip indicates if we are rotated correctly, so we are aligned correctly rotation-wise. And as you can see, I'm just doing pips. This craft isn't balanced well, because it's being balanced to be working without the big fuel tank attached on its back. So that's why it's a little bit skittish. All right. So, last chance for those of you in the comments to see if there is an issue. 
before we go and perform a beautiful soft completely non-functional docking okay did you spot the issue no last chance i was trying to figure out what the hell went wrong so i tried to correct it again and ram it once again but of course it wouldn't work and the reason because it didn't work is drum roll please because on one side i have a clampotron docking port and another one i have a clampotron docking port junior However, I wasn't that dumb enough to have both juniors, but I have the actual docking port regular on the opposite side. So that actually means, as you can tell, we cannot dock here, but we will be able to dock on the other side. And I realized, aha, my station design, I really wanted to have the, both the junior and the senior. So on the other one, actually, this is not the senior, on the reg other one is the regular. So I decided, take a picture, and then I'm gonna be burning to get to the other side. Now you could say, Gromforks, you could just rotate the station by 180 degrees. In space there is no up. Yeah, what would be the fun in that? So, I mean, Kilt Les Kerman is a skilled pilot. And despite the fact that Gromforks Kerman is a total numbnuts, he will be able to perform the task regardless of how complex it is. So. See this port? This is the Clampertron docking port, actual one. And to that one, we're gonna dock. I was carefully measuring to make sure that I could do this backflip. So, yeah, this will drag on for a little bit just to make sure that we are aligned properly and then we can go. So, big station, yeah, sorry for the bump little guys, but you at least got a chance to experience some gravity in those labs. I mean, in the labs you have gravity due to the spinning wheels, but here, yeah. All right, so we have 13 meters and I'm just gonna go now heavy on the RCS. We don't need to worry, we have plenty of RCS in our tanks and I'm gonna make sure that I refill them before we go down to the surface of Duna. So just to be on the safe side. Uh, however, I do want to make sure that I have a nice soft dock. Okay, part, aim camera. I really wanted that my camera is showing from my control pod. Okay, and now let's just burn forward. I think we're well aligned. So we only thing we need to do is to increase our C velocity and reduce our C distance, as you can tell by the docking port alignment indicator. We are well aligned, more or less. I actually need to rotate by half a degree just to make sure that this is correctly placed. Okay, now the orange pip is correct. And that means that I have to correct the transversal uh, vertical alignment actually which i am doing the seven meters and one thing guys this time when i'm closing in i'm gonna disable sas just before we dock okay there we go killing the sas not to awaken the kraken and we are docked ladies and gentlemen we have successfully docked, and look, Max Kerman, Smoking Kerman, and all other Kerbals are welcoming us. And hi, dying to play Kerman, you too. Everything okay, buddy? How do you like Duna so far? <laughs> all right. Anyway, now, dying to play Kerman is an engineer, so he will be probably repackaging our shoots once we come back to the station. However, for the time being, we don't need that thing. We need Smoking Kerman, who is scientist. He's gonna get on board, and then he's gonna be boarding this ship because getting ready to the... Shall we say Duna or Ike? I'm, I'm still conflicted, guys. Do let me know in the comments below. Should I go first to Ike and then to Duna, or should I go d straight to Duna? I mean, going to Ike, I could still use the transfer stage, I could refuel it and use the transfer stage to, to max, min-max my science. However, if I go to Duna, we would get to the awesome nest faster. Do let me know in the comments below, who knows? By a popular vote, you just might impact the course of the next episode. Hmm, there's a thought. Okay, right, so, grab, smoke it, and board it. Good. Perfect. 
I think we are now in the good spot and let's see yeah inventory we have plenty of breaking ground experiments so there you go guys beautiful right let me just share with you a couple of more awesome pictures as we approach the Duna sunny side I really wanted to skip the darkness part and having you bask in the glory of this space station it took me a long while to construct it and even longer to actually send it on its way however we're there and it looks amazing I'm really happy the way it operates so yeah there we go kudos all right guys so with that thing out of the way Thank you very, very much for watching, hope you liked the episode, do remember to actually fling a like at this and check if you are not maybe unsubscribed, a lot of people got unsubscribed for whatever reason and I will be seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching, this is Grumforks, signing off.